everybody and welcome to How to Pass the Math FSA. This is the fifth grade edition. We are working on the following standard. We're working on maths.5.mbt.1.4 Lesson 7, Rounding Decimals. Rounding is one of my favorite skills. So, let's break it down, shall we? So what we are doing today is we need to remember this. Five or more, let it soar. Yes, I'm totally knocking frozen. Oh! Or four or less, you better let it rest. Okay? And I also have another little ditty for you that goes, everything else becomes zeros, everything else becomes zeros. We'll get to that, but first, let's start with example one, shall we? All right. What is five and 268 thousands rounded to the nearest hundredth? All right. So first, let's find and underline the hundredths place. Decimal to the right, tenths, hundredths. There it is. This is the tenths. This is the hundredths place. So we look next door. Spotlight to the right. Eight goes in the five or more. Let it soar and add one to the rounding place. So we bring everything down. Seven and the eight becomes a zero. Um, because I'm such a scholar, I'm actually going to drop this zero because it doesn't really matter when we're in the decimal places and there's nothing behind it. So 5.27 or 5 and 27 hundredths. If you put five and 270 thousandths, I think they would give it to you. All right, we're moving on to example two, but before we do, I've got something to share with you. It's like a rhyme game today. Um, if you, whoop, if you um, want to be working on the same examples that I am, you can download my How to Pass the Math FSA resource by clicking in the link the description box below, there's a link. Click that, it'll take you to the complete guide and you'll be on your way to rocking the FSA. Gosh, I'm just like a rhyming fool today. All right, example two. Select the value of each decimal number when it is rounded to the nearest whole number. The whole number would be the ones place. I'll say that again, the whole number is the ones place place. That's important for you to know. So many students get the tripped up. They think, hmm, whole number, which place is that? It's the ones place. Okay. Whole number is the ones place. All right. This is a matching item question. So we got to decide, is this number, if we round it to the nearest whole, does it round to six or seven? So let's find the whole, which is six. Look next door. We have zero that's four or less. You better let it rest so it stays six. Here's a hole, look next door. Five or more, let it soar. And add one to the rounding place. Six plus one is seven. Look next door, that's a two. Four or less, you better let it rest. Keep it at a six. And look next door to our four. Four or less, you better let it rest. It would stay at six holes. Okay. Which one? Which one? Which one? Example three. I don't know what that was. Alice <laughs> rounded, I just felt like doing that. Alice rounded to the number seven and 289 thousandths, and the result was seven and three tenths. To which place did she round the original number? So, she says she got that. She had this, her original number, and when she rounded it, her result was this. Well, let's see which place remains. It looks like she rounded to the tenths place because the eight next door would let it soar up to a three and everything else becomes zero. Or in fifth grade case, with decimals non-existent, you don't even need them there. So to the nearest tenths place. Select all the numbers that round to seven and two tenths when rounded to the nearest tenth. So we are going to round to the nearest tenths place. Let's round each number, shall we? We have seven and nineteen hundredths. 
and we round to the nearest tenths, we see that it's five or more, and we let it soar, so we add one, which would be seven and two tenths. Mark it. Next, we have seven and twenty-seven hundredths. Round to the nearest tenths place looks next door. That's let it soar, so we add one. That would be seven and three tenths. That is far too much. Now, seven and two hundred thirty-three thousandths. Nearest tenths. Circle it. Let it rest, so we still have seven and two tenths. Everybody mark it. Okay. Seven and three hundred forty-five thousandths round to the nearest tenths. This would rest, but we would be left with seven and three tenths. That is not a correct answer. And seven and two hundred one thousandths round to the nearest tenths. We look next door. There's nothing there, and it makes us feel miserable inside. Just kidding. <laughs> oh, I cannot teach like that. <laughs> so weird. All right, so these are your correct answers. All those numbers round to seven and two tenths. When you round it to the nearest tenth. Ooh. Example five. Numbers are rounded to the nearest tenth and hundredth as shown in the table. Complete the table to show the numbers that could be rounded. So what we're going to do is we're going to place numbers inside of these tables, table spaces because this is a table item. And when we put this number, if we were to round it to the nearest tenth, this needs to be our result. And when we round to the nearest hundredth, this needs to be our result. So what I like to do for these is, since we're rounding to the nearest hundredth, I want my original numbers to go to the nearest thousandth. So to start, <clears throat> we're gonna start with one and 62 hundredths because that's what it is when we round to the nearest hundredth. And whatever I put in the thousandths place, I need to make sure that it doesn't bump my hundredths up because then that won't make sense. So I'm going to put a two because when I round to the nearest hundredth, that two will let the two in the hundredths place rest, which will keep everything nice and smooth. I'm going back to that voice again. Don't do it. Okay. Now. All right, so my next one is three and 28 hundredths. So I put three and 28 hundredths in the box. I need to put a number between zero and four that will make it so everything else plays out. Um, I'm not gonna put zero, cause that's just too easy. But I will put one. It's easy, but just a step up. And finally, six and 35 hundredths. Put something behind it that will not bump our hundredths place up. So I could put three. All right, that's how you do this one. Okay, everybody, motivational message time for you. Today's message is to start living your life fearlessly. That means in a way that you do not have fear in your life. Don't let fear hold you back. If you know that you're meant to do something and that you're supposed to do something, do it and have faith that it will work out. Okay. Be brave. We need to stop being scared and stuck inside of this box. Break out of the box and be you. Okay. Start living your life fearlessly and say, fear, bring it on. You ain't going to stop me. And ain't, ain't a word, so I ain't going to say it. Okay. So this is one that I have to look at and remind myself of constantly because we are naturally inclined to doubt and to fear and to think that all is gonna go wrong, but it's not, not all the time, okay? 99% of things that you're afraid of will never happen. So start thinking positively, be brave, you can do this, let's go.